At a time when Parisian fashion was relegated to the elite, Japanese import Kenzo Takada stirred the established code of couture by cheekily breaking the rules and ushering in the notion that design need not take itself so seriously in order to be enjoyed. With his keen eye for bold and vivacious colours, eclectic and multicultural patterns, and a flair for the theatrical that turned every collection into an eagerly awaited extravaganza. Takada injected fashion with a sense of joyous wonder that echoes through to designers of the modern era. Kenzo a beaucoup de, de talent, euh, en plus de son talent qu'on connaît de couturier, c'était aussi un très grand peintre. C'est un grand magicien des couleurs. Euh, moi, je trouve euh, dans son boulot, c'est quelque chose qui est, qui est récurrent euh, et qui est incontestable, euh, même durant son parcours. Et puis, il a même un parcours assez exemplaire. Il a bon euh, sur tous les points qu'il détermine. Il est assez juste. Euh, il a un goût absolument magnifique. Born in 1939, in a small village within the city of Himeji, Takada was the fifth of seven children in his family. His childhood was complicated, and with good reason. He suffered from dyslexia at an early age, and oral expression remains a challenge for him to this day. I feel as if I don't know how to speak, Takada has said. And yet, Takada is a man who has amplified the means of expressing oneself through fashion. Takada's love for couture developed as a child when he would regularly read his sister's magazines. As a young man, he followed the wishes of his parents by attending the University of Kobe to study literature, only to disappoint them by dropping out and enrolling into Tokyo's Bunker Fashion College, becoming the first male student ever to be admitted. University was not my thing, he recalled years later, although the same could be said of his early experiences at Bunker College. When I entered the School of Design in Tokyo, I felt I was beneath everything. I wasn't at that level. I couldn't understand everything. But he persevered, and after graduating, worked for a department store in Tokyo and later for a magazine. But Takada had higher aspirations, and in 1965, he followed the advice of his old college lecturer, traveling to Paris by boat with a desire to become a fashion designer and discover a world outside of the strict confines of Japan. It was a bold gambit. Takada knew no one in the country. He spoke limited French and was essentially without a dollar to his name. Early life in Paris certainly was far from the waking dream he had envisioned in Japan. He sustained himself by working as a freelance designer, sketching images and creating his own pieces. His destitution in unfamiliar surroundings proved to be a blessing in disguise. The only fabrics he could afford in those early days came from flea sales, and so the burgeoning designer was forced to mix a multitude of bold materials, combining scraps he found in Paris with those he had preserved from Japan to form singular garments. It was an inspired combination of artistic dexterity and multicultural aesthetic that would come to define the Kenzo label. At the beginning, when I worked in a design office, I just followed the way things were going. Then, when I started out on my own, I realized I had to create my own style. One day, I designed a pullover that was completely square. Like this. And I think that's what gave me my basic style. His Japanese influences, so prominent in his designs, 
came primarily from memories of his mother. I was fascinated by mother. She was omnipresent and incredibly elegant in the kimonos she wore so well. There were two types of kimonos in Japan during the early 70s, simple and very strict, or magical and colorful. Takada chose to exploit the latter in his designs, fusing the foundations of the kimono with traditional Western tailoring to create pieces truly unique in their inspiration. But the true spirit of the Kenzo label lay in the man himself and the bubbling sense of joy and enthusiasm he held for the world around him. When I was in Japan, I wasn't remotely interested in Japan's traditional style. But little by little, I have begun to love that tradition. Takada describes his stint in Paris as crazy years for me, working tirelessly throughout the day and partying endlessly of an evening. On recalling his friendship with designer Lulu La Falaise, he said, I think for a period of two years, we went out together every night. Wherever we went, we danced till dawn. I just love to dance and to laugh. It was a light-hearted temperament the disillusioned Paris youth would latch onto in the coming years, weary of the selectivity that came from traditional couture and desperate for a sensibility they could identify with. After months working as a freelance designer, Takada's big break came through a series of sketches inspired by André Courage a revolutionary French fashion designer renowned for his futurist vision. Of the 30 designs he created, five were sold to the wife of Parisian designer Louis Ferraud. Takada eventually found work as a company designer in Paris, and after several years of experience, decided it was time to establish his own store. He opened his first boutique in 1970, establishing his namesake label Kenzo the same year, a fitting blend of East meets West aesthetic that mirrored his experience as a Japanese expatriate in Paris. Et the culture a été un facteur important de mon inspiration et de ma carrière. The boutique Jungle Jap was set up in an unkempt clothing store in the famous Gallery Vivienne. Takada renovated the store single-handedly and even allowed it to play host to his very first show. While the term Jap is commonly recognized as a derogatory word within the Japanese community, Takada reclaimed the word for his work, intending to redefine the slur by relating it to something beautiful. Enzo first showed it was all about mixing things from India, from Africa, from Asia. It was never solemn, it was always fun, it was always with music. And it was about making the heart beat faster, enthusiasm, excitement. Over the next decade, Takada ushered in a new paradigm of Parisian fashion. At a time when the historic couture houses of Dior, Yves Saint Laurent and Chanel dominated French fashion, with their bon chic, bon genre, exclusivity, and institutional values, Takada injected a universal perspective on fashion that emphasized inclusion and enjoyment. His understanding of the zeitgeist and cheerful, eclectic, idiosyncratic take on modern dressing cleared a pathway to prominence. Paris youth flocked to the bold new designer who quickly became known for inexpensive collections that resonated with vibrancy and wonder, a direct contrast to the haughty couture of his esteemed competitors. After being in Paris a while, I began to travel back to the East. Hong Kong, Saigon, Bombay, Singapore, Peking, all of these images of my travels were in my head. They became evident in my collections. Pendant ce voyage, tous les pays différents, les gens différents, 
Ça m'a resté tellement fort dans ma, dans ma tête. J'ai dit, quand j'ai commencé à dessiner... My voyages of the East appeared in my clothes. I began to travel more to gather ideas from my collections. J'ai commencé le voyage dans la collection. I love the idea that Kenzo first introduced that fashion could be fun, said the future creative director of Kenzo, Antonio Moras. That fashion is creativity and not a status symbol. That fashion is freedom. It was a bold message about creativity and energy, global fashion and universal culture. He broke into the fashion world and made it change, preparing the future for others. Indeed, Kenzo was one of the first labels to introduce ethnic chic to the streets and embrace cultures beyond the traditional West. Recognizing that the French found exotic elements to be appealing, Takada drew inspiration from ethnic cultures around and across the globe. Over the course of four decades, Kenzo collections have combined a stunning array of countries and cultures into single collections. Scandinavian knits with Mexican ribozos and Romanian pleated skirts and awning striped shirts and dresses that evoke the French Riviera. The label has experimented with North American feather detailing, North African kaftans, Eastern European peasant aprons and smocks, and the Indian Nehru suit, while squeezing in nods to American pop culture and even an ode to prohibition gangster Al Capone. He's given us an extremely rare gift. In my country, we say thank you for saying thank you, and that's what he has just done for us. To say that Takada is diverse would be a profound understatement. When asked about his search for inspiration and love of travel, Takada responded, I don't go around looking for influences. The energy arrives. This may be true. But the designer is a self-professed observer, spending copious amounts of time people watching and studying shop windows when he arrived in Paris as a means of understanding the Parisian culture and youth. His keen perception paired with an ability to harmonize styles from across the globe made it possible for Takada to penetrate the entrenched fashion hierarchy and become one of the most regarded fashion designers for over three decades. Kenzo stands for freedom, says Maras. No limits in inspiration. All influences from every part of the world are welcome. No limits in shapes and volumes. That means freedom of movement thanks to no couture patterns and kimono shapes. No limits in the vision. No dream is too far away, too crazy or visionary. I grew up in Japan just after the war and there was nothing. The only thing we had were films, so I watched many American films and I started to draw. At the time, Saint Laurent was starting. He was my idol. So I watched what he did for Dior and for his own brand, Saint Laurent. It was incredible. It made me dream. In 1965, I wanted to spend six months in Paris, and by chance, I found a job. In 1970, I had the opportunity to open a shop, and straight after, I was on the front cover of Elle. This was when it started. In 1983, Takada released his first men's collection. Three years later, he dubbed a collection around the world in 80 days, despite already being the preeminent traveler of fashion for over a decade. His fashion palette has remained endlessly multicultural and synchronistic, filled with ethnic outbursts, flamboyant color combinations, and audacious prints. He continued to develop his label in subsequent years, expanding into children's wear and home collections in 1987, followed by fragrances for men and women in 1988 and 1991 respectively, and the launch of skincare line Kenzoki in 2001. Takada imbues each of his lines with the same limitless wonder and theatricality 
he extends to his catwalk shows. A highlight of the fashion calendar for over 30 years, every collection was an extravaganza. From the 1979 show in a circus tent, closing with women in transparent uniforms riding on horseback, and to Carter himself for top of an elephant, to his final show in 1999. A Preta Porta showcase commemorating his 30 year career with a stadium celebration that included an enormous Kenzo retrospective, showcased by many of the world's most famous models. I know that in the end we cried. We were there dancing, having fun, but there were also tears from knowing that Kenzo had decided to leave. We're going to miss him. But what a marvelous gift he has given us today. Like so many revolutionary designers, his success can be attributed to a refusal to follow the direction of temporary trends in the spirit of a true renegade. When you're forced to react to trends that you are not very close to, it imprisons, Takada has said. His resolve was to stay true to himself. And this is exactly how he has approached the fashion scene, imbuing haute couture with color, joy, and an open freedom of expression that so closely resonates with his personality. In 1993, French luxury goods company LVMH acquired Kenzo. Six years later, Takada retired from his namesake label to pursue his artistic aspirations, leaving his esteemed fashion house in the hands of his assistants. I found that absolutely incredible. And what especially strikes me is thinking that he has given so much imagination and creativity throughout his life to fashion. How will he cope with retiring? Takada returned to the public eye renewed and reinvented with his 2005 launch of Gokan Kobo. The studio of the five senses was a new form of design, offering unique home furnishings. In 2017, Takada broke into a collaboration with Roche Boboy to reinvent their signature icon. The legendary Mahjong sofa was the result. Rather than a cultural note, its namesake was to intend its ability to mix and match the sectional pieces that feature Takada's own fabrics from his Nogaku collection, a kimono-like jacquard material. The design meets Japanese tradition with Takada's modern vision to combine comfort with fantasy. The French luxury house, who has links to Christian Lacroix, Sonia Riquiel, and Jean-Paul Gaultier, courted Takada for several years before securing his commission on the sofa and a line of homewares which have achieved critical success. Meanwhile, Kenzo had undergone an important transition, announcing Antonio Moras as the new artistic director of the house in 2003, and his eventual rise to creative director in 2008. Kenzo moved into a more polished and feminine direction under the guidance of Morass, breaking away from its streetwear roots, as Morass explained during the transition. The Kenzo collections are a meeting point where opposite elements melt together to create something unexpected and beautiful. I'm writing the new pages of Kenzo, and I'd love this anniversary to mark a new phase towards modernity. My vision is deeply linked to my being Italian, a love for beautiful fabrics and timeless elegance. But this is not opposite to the Kenzo spirit. It is just another element to melt into its very rich history. We set out to maintain the direction of the fashion house. I think that the first important aspect of Kenzo is travel, and for me it's very natural. I travel all the time. It's normal to think about travelling, and we have also aimed to look delicately at nature, because travel and nature are the two rules of the fashion house. 
These new pages of Kenzo failed to ignite the public interest. And in 2011, Morass announced his departure from the label. He was replaced by the dynamic duo of Umberto Leon and Carol Kim, founders of cult US clothing store Opening Ceremony. The new creative directors were determined to bring back the energetic, fun, and high-spirited Kenzo that Takada originally envisioned, making the brand relevant again through their own street-led sensibilities. A year after their appointment, Leon said, Kenzo as a brand has such a rich and fascinating history. It can be hard to determine where exactly we have changed. With our new collections, we hope that we have injected the brand with a youthful spirit and a sense of fun and cheekiness, but we also want to respect and preserve the traditions of the Kenzo house, such as the importance of prints and the sense of worldliness and travel that has been intrinsic to every collection in the history of Kenzo. Under Leon and Kim, Kenzo has become more involved in the artistic elements of design collaborating with avant-garde artists, musicians and actors with each new collection. In their full showcase of 2014, they worked with filmmaker David Lynch, who mixed the soundtrack for the show and provided a large sculpture of his own design. They've even worked with luxury water company Evian to design Kenzo bottles. Hardly a surprising move for the designers, who at opening ceremony collaborated with everyone from Martin Margiela to the Muppets. In 2018, they have teamed up again with youth fashion giant H&M. The Kenzo Cross H&M collection received a lot of buzz ahead of its November drop. Among other ambassadors, the campaign includes Norwegian musician Anna of the North, featured in folkish ribbon dress with psychedelic prints. Ribbons were a signature detail of the founding designer, who in a recent tome incorporated images of his archive of ribbons collected over his career. After five years of creating, we thought, gosh, we have such an amazing archive and a history. It would be great to be able to start to celebrate some of that. Majority of it is the Kenzo Takata archives and then mixed in with a little bit of our archives, but the idea was to really kind of celebrate the archives and we called it Memento Collection Number One. The first one, again, focused around a certain these iconic pieces from Kenzo Takata and some of the amazing archival imagery and obviously the iconic Hans Fur images. So we're going to do take a similar approach. It'll be holistic and you'll be able to see a very strong idea presented in the next collection. It coincides with the release of the self-titled 2018 memoirs, Kenzo Takada in which the somewhat nostalgic designer considers his own contribution to the world as he traces back his path from a keen-eyed young designer in 1965 right up to his final runway show in Paris. Remarking, I think I brought liberty to fashion in how clothes are worn, how they are moved in, the colors. Defining that freedom which pertains to the Kenzo woman who were enabled by the beauty and movement of his designs. The pages are decorated with over four decades of sketches, photos and designs, and includes an unseen photographic essay of his seminal work, an iconic wedding gown from his 1982 autumn winter collection. When I decided to stop in 2000, it was hard at first. I really missed it. But the fashion industry never stops. You always have to be available to work each season. I think the profession has changed a lot, and all this technology is crazy. Despite stopping for reflection, Takada manages to maintain his working relevance, collaborating with Avon on a new scent, Avon Life, in 2016 and more recently, Avon Life with Colour. For Takada, it is not a sellout, rather a partnership of scents, with the accessibility of Avon aligning neatly to his own values. Having said, it follows what I initially did in fashion, 
trying to democratize great products. Released under his own name, the deal is a separate entity to Kenzo Parfums, which has been owned by LVMH since Takada's stepping down. The initial launch broke all sales records for the company. Remarkable considering they are already the third largest player in the fragrance market in the top 15 countries where Avon is present. Given this, Avon are undertaking an aggressive digital campaign for the new fragrance, as well as securing an activation with the man himself during Paris Fashion Week. It was a particularly personal presentation for the designer, with his successors paying tribute to Sayuko Yamaguchi, one of the world's first Asian supermodels, and incidentally to Kada's personal muse. The all-Asian casting was a progressive masterstroke for the boys, who still managed to maintain diversity by its inclusion of models from Japan, China, and Korea. The duo continue to reference the founder and his impact on the brand's new direction, with the full 17 La Collection Momento, taking influence from the archives. Skipping the runway in favour of a dinner party at La Monnaie de Paris, which was reinvented into a tropical jungle, Momento was an ode to Decada's love of the dream by the master Le Douanier Rousseau. Models were like walking foliage in potted plants, bringing the painting to life. Leon and Lim's strategy is to capture experiences in fashion, moments that disrupt the traditional format with the flair and showmanship of Takada himself. In line with this, Memento was presented at the New York Fashion Week as a film entitled The Everything, directed by co-artistic director Umberto Leon and starring a stellar cast, which included actress Mila Jovovich. Really about defining what was key to the brand, formulas that are inherently in the brand. And we wanted to really celebrate those elements. And at the same time, we wanted to make sure that this is something new. I think that we wanted to make sure that the current Kansas uh, customer was really almost rediscovering the brand in itself. And then that anybody who hadn't heard of Kenzo before would discover this in a brand new way and be as excited. Kenzo Takada took to film as well, performing a short visual for the Buenos Aires-based film collective 1985 and Landia, whom captured the artists in a unique portrait which centered around the artist's hands and their ability to create. The hands of a person will tell you his secret or not. The hand is the tool of the soul. They say a lot about who we are. This is Mr. Kenzo Takada. Who are you? So much could be said to define the genius of Kenzo Takada, but what is left will be a legacy that remains entrenched in every designer with a penchant for color and flair. From streetwear devotees to those who dwell in the loftiest realms of haute couture, his supernatural trajectory paved the way for a wave of Japanese designers to make their mark in Paris and inspire the rest of the world with Eastern sensibilities. Even his successors, Leon and Kim, owe a substantial debt to the man whose vibrancies and eclecticism changed the way the youth perceived high fashion. But for the man who redefined dour and elitist couture as something to be adored, it was the work, never the accolades, that sustained his joy. It pleases me when people say I have influence, but I am influenced by the world and that says I influence it. The world I live in is my influence. <laughs>